Hi, this is Abdul Bharti and we are here at QPan and Cloudinary Con in Atlanta. And today we have with us Bianca Levis, Executive Director of Open Source Software Foundation. Bianca, it's great to have you on the show. Great to be on the show. Thanks, Abdul. Let's talk about your own journey and your arrival at the Linux Foundation. Yeah, uh, well, thank you for asking, first of all. And yeah, I joined about two months back. And my history um, in search technology dates back to about 2015, mm. where I um, started on um, Elasticsearch to provide a service, a front end for um, Elasticsearch at a company called Logs.io. Mm -hmm. And after four years at Logs.io, uh, eventually I moved to a company called Opster mm -hmm. that later was purchased by Elastic mm -hmm. and in, um, made a very conscious decision that open search was the direction that I would like to go in. Mm -hmm. It took a little while after the Linux Foundation has taken over the project. And I started uh, two months ago as the Foundation's first uh, executive director and excited to be here. Open Source Software Foundation has been evolving ever since it was contributed to the Linux Foundation. But I want to talk about what vision are you bringing to the foundation? I think the first year of the Open Source Software Foundation was about taking it from a vendor initiated open source project into something which is completely vendor neutral and gaining that credibility into the, into the community where the community can really trust that it's, uh, it's vendor neutral and their contributions and features and developments are all uh, part of the platform which will be free and open for everybody to use and to adopt. Um, my vision now is to give that vibrant community which is uh, really in a wave of innovation the uh, platform where they can come into the foundation and they can influence the project, they can contribute to the project, and they can get value um, not only from the code assets of open search, but also the non-code assets of open search and uh, get other perks uh, such as uh, upskilling and certification programs and uh, things that will really benefit the project to move forward into the next strategic level. Now, it doesn't matter whether it's open source or proprietary. When it comes to technology, technology is the easy part. People, culture is where the real challenge is. If I ask you, how do you look at the technology aspect at the same time, people and cultural aspect of Open Search Software Foundation? Um, that's the first time I've been asked a question about people, so thank you very much for asking that. <laughs> um, and you're right, it's not just about code and just about contributions. Um, people can contribute to the project uh, through multiple layers um, of the project uh, besides the code. No. Uh, the first layer is, of course, as you mentioned, uh, is documentation. A big part of that and part of the open source community is about uh, compliance, is about uh, building libraries for SBOMs and non-code assets. And especially with things like CRA coming in Europe now, um, I think a lot of companies are going to be pushed towards using the open source version and, and um, working very hard to control their own platforms and to comply with that. And that's one aspect. Another very human aspect of open search and the open source project of open search is the fact that in version 3.3, on a technical level, we released uh, for the first time GA, mm -hmm. um, agentic search. Mm -hmm. And that's a great example of the human aspect and not just the development of code to contribute to the project because it's going to democratize it to a much wider audience. Because now what you can do is you can ask a question of open search in plain English mm -hmm. and the agent will formulate all the queries and the syntax and you can ask questions that the executive layer and the management layer and everything can use it for decision making and bring them into the project and that's far from development and coding. Now, since you mentioned 3.x release and you also mentioned agents, how do you see, because the fact is, it's not that easy to talk about AI and open source in the same sentence. Uh, talk a bit about how do you see open source and AI when it comes to 
open source software foundation? Um, I think it's a foundational role, uh, not just a big role. Uh, from the perspective that the different use cases in open search, um, which are including use cases like observability and uh, enterprise search and everything else, um, have evolved obviously um, with the realm of AI and nobody knows quite how to use it and how to be productive about it yet. It's more a, a buzz than uh, we know it increases productivity. We're not sure how to do that at this, at this present time. But what open search is going to do to make it more concrete is it'll provide the data infrastructure backbone of AI, um, which will give context into the data. And that will bridge that, that gap. And by context into the data, it's going to take a platform like open search from something like um, anomaly detection and machine learning kind of AI. Right now, we've said, we'll begin in 10 seconds. We've said CPU in time in the solution into something uh, with a lot more context, where instead of just seeing the, we've got a spike in CPU, why is it happening and investigate in a week later to a, an RCA, a root cause analysis. What we'll have now is context onto the data within open search. And, uh, those data silos between logs and traces and metrics will all be in a single interface and all be correlated. So when something happens, the AI layer will have that context of these metrics belong to these logs, belongs to this trace. And to be able to get to the analysis a lot quicker than was previously possible. And open search will play the key role in bridging that gap. I was actually about to ask, you know, where do you see the intersection of observability, search, and AI? And I think you kind of answered that question already there. Or do you want to elaborate on that? Yeah, I think the use case I gave um, is a, a use case uh, particularly pertinent to observability mm -hmm. across the infrastructure. Yeah. Um, but of course, AI in search um, is another topic and we won't get into too many details but it's very very exciting at the moment because there are different use cases which open search can be used on and obviously part of that is developing um is developing um rag applications uh, for for vector search um the key strength of open search for search um it's kind of in the name uh, but it's also um, the fact that it's really good at keyword search and semantic search as a basis, um, as a context to give hybrid search, to give vector search and rag search a chance to actually be more accurate and filtered and more accurate results at scale, at enterprise scale, than it ever was in the past. I mean, if you look at your three dot release, you know, the whole family of. From your perspective, what are, from technology aspect, what are the things that, because you have been involved, as you said, 2015, you know, almost 10 years now, that even you were excited about, hey, these are the things that are moving in the right direction. So a couple of things. First of all, to understand that the foundational um, technology behind uh, open um, search and other databases, obviously you've seen which upgraded versions and part of making it scalable was to upgrade a major version of open source um, 3.3x, I guess. What gets me most excited is it gives us that enterprise scalability to scale with, with AI, the agentic search, um, building GPU support, um, changing the discovery tab, where it's got a single pane of glass that gives that context of the data now that you can play with. Um, PPL, um, pieces of code that analysts will love with different code snippets that we've got built in. Um, these are like feature examples of the way that we move in open search into a data retrieval, retrieval platform to something which is scalable to base business decisions on and not just a necessary evil in a business. And that's the idea of moving into 3X. 
what are the things that, um, of course, it's an open source project, so the community decides, right, you know, where the direction is going to head. But if you can talk about what are some of your or community's type priority as we walk or crawl or drive into 2026? Um, Top priorities, you know, for you and the community for Open Source Foundation for the next year. It's really important. I'm going to answer it uh, from a community aspect, project aspect, and uh, also from a very high level kind of um, technical aspect, uh, which will which will impact both. So the major um, the major projects that I want to move the Open Source Software Foundation into next year is to give a a home for all users and enterprises which are basing their applications on open search today um, to come in and actually drive the project from the inside and to get value to do that to upskill their workforce to build a vendor ecosystem around it which are accredited and having the correct skills to provide the services required for um, effective open search operations the whole business model is to keep it completely open. Mm -hmm. So that vendor system is going to provide the choice of do I want to control it? How do I want to strengthen that community uh, choice, drive it, drive the innovation that we spoke about earlier to get more people as members into the foundation so they can sit and influence more um, special interest groups and special committees and uh, to drive decision making on how to do that. The idea is, obviously, to build the sustainability and growth of the project, which, as I said before, is enjoying a great wave of innovation to take advantage of that, which I think we're, we're really positioned to do that. And ultimately, to bring um, enterprise search and even observability into the realms where um, it will provide certainty into the operations of our members' business where we will understand what uh, projects are going to cost, what time frames are going to be, what efforts are going to be needed. And that's the kind of value that we want to drive for our members. Open Source uh, Software Foundation is created as a home for open source. But the way I have seen a lot of Linux Foundation projects is they get so big that it becomes home to a lot of other projects that complements that. So do you see that Open Source Software Foundation will also become kind of home? Because as the funny thing with open source is that even Linux kernel, when I talk to Linux, you know, he created it to solve his problem. But look at how Linux has been used today. You know, we did not envision that. Same thing with Kubernetes and same thing may happen with open source as well. People will start using that suddenly somebody will say, this project can help contribute to open search, you know, so suddenly there'll be a ton of projects under Linux, uh, open search fund. So my question to you is that, do you envision the future where open search software foundation will not just be about open search technology, but a lot of uh, complementing technologies, they will find a right home because as the community grows, as the ecosystem grows, a lot of folks will say, hey, we have this technology, we want to contribute it to Linux Foundation, and I feel that Open Source Software Foundation is the right home for that. Swafnil, it's uh, something I can definitely envisage uh -huh. uh, in the future. Um, the beautiful thing about an open source project, it can grow to unexpected directions. Today, our focus is to grow the open search project um, and fulfill the potential that this great platform can give to the community. But we agree with you 100% is that in the future, there might be other uh, search tangents and uh, AI projects which plug in really well to open search. And I think in the future, uh, if that becomes somewhere that can benefit the foundation, we will definitely be happy to look at it at the appropriate time. Can you talk about what are some of the challenges that you face where you're like, this is where we need help from the larger community. Uh, and when we talk about there is no community in open source world, there are communities, there are developers, there are maintainers, there are fly by patches, you know, somebody just send one patch. 
then there's a whole vendor ecosystem, you know, then the whole, you know, system, user, you know, communities. Uh, what are some of the pain points that you're seeing today where you're like, hey, this is call to action. This is where we need, this is where we want more contribution, more participants to further grow and enrich the foundation. Yeah, um, it's part of the story of a self-fulfilling prophecy because the more, the more we can, the more users and contributors we have, um, the more vendors are going to join the ecosystem because of the commercial opportunities and the more we'll be able to empower them and then the more services those users will get back. So it's one of those self-fulfilling cycles that we, that we build in from the ground up. Um, where do we see the need today for that? I think step one at the foundational step is to grow the organized community. I'm saying organized community because nobody really knows exactly how many users and companies are building applications on OpenSearch. So to give a structure so those numbers become more transparent so vendors and ecosystems can grow in a very informed way. So that foundational work has got to happen in order to reach our growth targets. Ever since, of course, not only when open search was created, you know, but it was contributed. I prefer the word contributed versus donated because donation is something, you know, of, you know, altruism, charity, but that's not the case even though. So I prefer the word contribution. Ever since uh, open search was contributed to the Linux Foundation, what kind of momentum you have seen built around it? Uh, if you can name drop some companies and also if you folks made any announcement here at KubeCon. I think what the Linux Foundation has done for open search is create that credibility that companies are assured that the project will always remain open source and transparent and can be contributed to and influenced by themselves. And that has actually got great momentum at the moment, so I feel, because obviously AWS was a major founder of the project, but lately we've got SAP that have joined, we have Uber that have joined, um, and we've got a great announcement at KubeCon today, which we're so excited about for the future of uh, our search and AI and vector capabilities of our new premier member, which is IBM. Um, we hope to have many more such announcements uh, really soon. So super exciting times for us. When open search was contributed and where it is now today, what are the milestones that you have seen Especially when you join, you're like, you're excited about that. This project has achieved so much because we have seen a lot of projects like Velky is a great example, you know, uh, where when the project was announced and by the time, you know, when we talked again after a couple of months. So if I ask you, if you, uh, hey, these are the few things that even you're excited about that we have achieved in short time, what are those? On the technical aspect, the community are driving it. The speed's never seen before. Our performance is up more than 10 times. Our contributors has grown um, in orders of magnitude. Our memberships in the premier level is diversified in orders of magnitude. But I'm most excited um, about the credibility that the project was becoming a truly sustainable open source platform that will never, ever be put behind a paywall and closed to the community to build the future of AI search and observ observability. And that position is clear now. Bianca, thank you so much for joining me today. And of course, talk about Open Source Software Foundation and the trajectory of the growth. Thank you so much, but it also means that we'll be talking a lot because the way the project and the foundation is growing, there's so much work going on, but I really appreciate your time today. Thank you. Certainly. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time and absolute pleasure talking to you today.